we want to find the values of x that make the equation equal to 0. Well, this, equa excuse me, this equation is not equal to 0. So all we have to do then is set the equation equal to 0. So finding the zeros are going to be the values of x that make this equation true. And we also notice by looking at Desmos that the zeros are also the same thing as the x-intercepts, right? All right. So if we we're going to go ahead and solve for x, I'll subtract to 5. Because I would say it'd be much easier to, um, this isn't like factorable like difference of two squares or something. So I'm probably going to want to use what we call the square root method. I'm just going to rearrange that. x squared equals negative 5. Now I need to take the square root. So by introducing the square root, remember we have to include plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Now up to this point in this class, if we had something that came up like this, we would just say it's no real roots. And that is very um, commonly used. Hey, no real roots or no real zeros. However, today what we're going to be talking about is, well, what about if we have actually complex zeros? Um, how can we use that, or how does that kind of make sense? So anyways, what we can think about this is breaking this down into x equals plus or minus um, square root of negative 1 times 5. So in reality, the square root of negative 1, if you guys remember from algebra, algebra 2, what we talked about was when you're taking the square root of a negative number or a negative um, i, x equals plus or minus i square root of 5. So we can rewrite negative 1 as our imaginary, what we call the square root of negative 1 as our imaginary unit. So we can replace the square root of negative 1 with i. And therefore, that means we have complex <coughs> zeros. They're imaginary, complex, like they have an imaginary unit and a real unit. But these are imaginary. Then the second question I said, write as linear factorization. Linear factorization means writing it as a product of linear factors. So remember, guys, if here's your zeros, this was on your quiz. I gave you guys zeros. And what you guys had to do is write them out as factors. So the easiest way to do that is to set them both equal to x. And again, you guys could probably do this in your head once you get a little practice at this. Once you, you guys agree, I could write my answer like this, or I could write my answer like that, right? So once you have your zeros, then you can set them equal to 0. x minus i square root of 5 equals 0. x plus i square root of 5 equals 0. And now those are basically your two factors. So if I said I wanted you to write them as linear factorization, it just means you're writing them as a product of linear factors. And you guys remember from the beginning, we liked writing things in linear factorization. When you write things as linear factorization, isn't it really easy to find the zeros? 